African cotton is one of those questionable stories that we have across the African continent. One where at least 95, maybe even up to 97% of the cotton in Africa is exported. This is showing a major challenge in the stories of exporting and value addition on the continent. So I'm Jacqueline Shaw, your African fashion business coach, and I'm here to share stories with you from those who are working on the ground in Africa to share exactly what they're experiencing. Do make sure that you subscribe to this channel, subscribe even, because every Thursday I'll be dropping into your mailbox a new story, a new interview about the awesomeness that is happening on the continent today. So make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications. I'm bringing a couple from a company called This Is Us, Osione and Aroma, who have taken African cotton story plus a traditional textile story to build a business all about African cotton. So let's dive in. So hi guys, thank you so much for giving me your time today. It's a pleasure, a pleasure, a pleasure to have you, have you both here. Seeing all the beautiful products already that you're showcasing, please do introduce yourselves and exactly what you're doing so that we can learn more about your amazing brands. Uh, I'm Orama. My name is Orama Kukigam Itekoje. Um, I am a founder of This Is Us. We're both co-founders of This Is Us. Um, this Is Us is a sustainable design brand. Uh, design and manufacturing company that basically creates um, products that the, that the that the world and we, that the world and Nigeria um, that we want the world and Nigeria to be proud of. This is like our main thing. So we basically set out to start a company that we could be proud of, and that we thought all of our contemporaries in design could be proud of, and that we want Nigerians. As a, as a nation to be proud of. Um, yeah, so that's This Is Us. And we basically founded the company together. We started with um, This Is Funtua, which is the first project that we've landed on. And it's all about cotton. Um, and Osi? That's really nice. <laughs> I love it, I love it. You introduce yourself as well then, thank you. Osione. Okay, uh, my name is Osione Itegbuji. I am an artist and a graphic designer and co-founder of This Is Us with Orma. Um, Orma is really the visionary behind everything we do and I'm uh, a companion who helps with driving that vision. <laughs> that sounds like it. I love it. But you've got your you've got your direct positions in the company. I think that's what you're you're, you're saying as well. <laughs> Precisely. Yeah. Yes. Um, it, you know the the business started as a conversation around what is Nigerian made. Can we find things here that are of a high quality that people anywhere in the world can be proud of, um, especially Nigerians who are originating some of these products. And uh, Orma has a fashion background. Um, she's a fashion designer. Uh, founder oh, yeah. Sorry, I forgot to say. <laughs> we need to know that. We need to know that. <laughs> Tell us. Yes. Yeah. Go on. Oh, okay. Uh, she's a fashion designer. She found a line called Alali uh, back in the day um, and uh, studied in Milan. What is it? Luxury um, fashion? Basically, makeup? like I studied fashion um, experience and design management. So it's more the management aspect of, of fashion and luxury. Yeah. So when we started the conversations uh, around This Is Us, fashion was a natural place to start from. Um, Arma had just been working with Emine Gildo Zenia here in Lagos. She, she was managing their flagship store here. 
and um, was very interested in textiles and started asking questions about the manufacturing of cotton in Nigeria. So that's the genesis of This Is Us. Those questions led to what we now call the Funtua Project, um, which we started looking at how cotton is grown, how it's processed, uh, ultimately how it's dyed. And we were really excited by what we found that we decided to create a company that celebrated Nigerian made and we called it This Is Us, which is to say literally this cutscene that she's wearing, um, the apparel that we're wearing is us. Awesome. But also, This Is Us is like, the reason we called it This Is Us is we wanted it to be something that people could, could apply to like, like any great designer is us, it's Nigerian, it's, it's part of what we're talking about. It's part of what we're trying to do. We thought that, that was a very inclusive way of, of uh, portraying the company um, and portraying what we what we're setting out to do. Yeah. A, cl- a slight, slight, uh, slight, a slight side question, because um, Osione, you're saying about the narrative or the conversations around what is Nigerian, and um, um, is it? An, also connected with the, the pride of heritage as well. Would you say that? Because the, the fact that you're using local cotton and the local tra- uh, traditional textile technique, is it with the indigo, is it something to do with um, the heritage and the pride of heritage, would you say? It is. The real challenge that kind of spurred our interests came from you look around you want you want to let's say buy a chair or you want to um buy a basket um or you or you hire someone to make something and the results you get isn't like a high quality or sort of like what you're used to and, and we, you know, we schooled outside Nigeria, we traveled quite a bit, so you can't help but compare. You're like, oh, well, you know, like maybe if you, if you have made in Italian shoes, made in Italy shoes, they, they're really, you know, of a certain quality. Um, and you know, you, you come to expect a certain standard. And so it really just came from there. It's like, is it our heritage that the things that are made here are substandard? Like that, that can't be the case, right? We needed to probe and find out if we could end to end find things that are intrinsically Nigerian or intrinsically African. It's been practiced here for a long time. People take pride in making it. People take pride in developing it and using it. And our, our hunch was that if we found those kinds of things or those types of design, um, it would not only be valuable here in Nigeria, but anywhere else in the world that you take it to, people yes. would consider it valuable in the same way that people value um, goods that are coming out of the West, uh, goods that are coming out of places like Japan. Yeah. You know, you're making me want to go into a whole different t- topic now with that. Very interesting topic about perceived value and perceived quality and the narrative around that in what makes you see something as better quality than another. And it's what exposure, I guess, and um, expectations. And there's so much we can go into that. We may get a chance to as well, because I think that's, um, that's a deep discussion. <laughs> it's actually about African product. Because there is this, this perception around it being, you know, because it's quite artis- artisanal. So, you know, it's lesser quality than it made in Italy just sound so much better. But I was having a discussion with others that you may buy shoes that are made in Italy, but the leather is coming from Nigeria, Cameroon, Ethiopia, somewhere in Africa, which a lot of the leathers are from the continent as well, and which are finished elsewhere, but they're not recognised. So this, this is a whole discussion, a whole discussion. But yeah, um, <laughs> we might come back to that. So mm-hmm. being that you're... Can you kind 
what connects to that? Some of the challenges, because you are doing this in, in Nigeria, you set this company up, you look at the cotton industry, what are some of the challenges that you've come across? I'm sure there have been some challenges, every business has challenges regardless, but specifically to working with cotton and or working with Nigeria, in Nigeria. Hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, you can write it up if possible. Like this question is is something that I'm constantly talking about every day. Oh dear. Um, I mean, the first challenge, obviously, like OC had has already mentioned, is is this as much as we we're talented and we've got resources and we've got capabilities, there seems to be like this way of designing or creating that is just not very well finished or very well done mm -hmm. and that that for me would be like the biggest challenge that we face working here is that especially when you work with the artisans a lot of them are more interested in just like working fast and finishing quick mm -hmm. as opposed to like delivering quality so even though we set out um wanting to celebrate this um, amazingness that was Nigerian design and and the works of our hands obviously there's challenges with that because some people don't value the works of their hands you know but this this is what we're trying to push past and I would say like as much as it is a challenge we have like stumbled upon really beautiful stuff in, in the process of of um you know like something that was supposed to be a mistake ends up being a true gem um it just makes you a bit more involved with the design process and the manufacturing process which works out great for us all and then i would say second challenge with regards to the cotton industry in particular is so we, we we would love to like step in on a scale that really we could control everything but um, the cotton industry, as you know, like the textile industry in the, con in the country has really, really like gone backwards in the past couple of years. And so first of all, there's not that much production. Um, yeah. There's a lot of production, but it's really, really decreased. So there's not that much production. And as you know, most things that are being produced are just being exported. So as a client, with the textile mills were actually not that important. So even though we're trying to like do all of this amazing work and we're trying to like push the local cotton, they don't see us as important because first of all, our orders cannot compare with international orders or like their sales internationally. So we're just like a random client and they, they you know, changing things we would love to design the actual weights we would love to design the weaves we would love to design lots more you know we would love to really go back in the process we would love to work with organic cotton we would, we yeah. love, you know what i mean but um there's just not that much flexibility when you're not that big when you're not that much of a giant because things have to be changed a lot of things have to be changed and those have cost implications which you know so it's that that for me is is one of the biggest challenges, but also I think the cotton industry could be a lot more advanced than it is. Um, when we first set out on our research, we thought, okay, let's go discover this cotton. It must be like, you know, there must be an abundance of it. But then we found out that actually the seed like quality has really, really, really like declined in the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, the yield on the seeds are not that much and so all the farmers complain everyone in the chain complains it's just not profitable anymore so it's really a push and it's a drive we need to push ourselves we need to push everyone along the chain to keep it going we need to push like designers we need to push everyone to kind of like keep the movement on and keep keep using the yeah. store which is a it takes great the whole industry yeah. Were well, you going to say something? What's your name? No, I, I think you capture it quite well. Um, the, the only thing I would add is that it ends up being a numbers game. Mm. Mm. The, the, 
the factories don't have a, a strong incentive to open new production lines or try out and experiment with new things because um, they need it to be of a certain size yeah. to take those kinds of um, steps. Yeah. Um, I brought that tease to the catwalk because I wanted to share the story, raise awareness about African cotton um, farmers and that they weren't receiving the same subsidies as like those in America, those in Europe, wherever, Asia, and that it was really wasn't fair. You know, they were handpicked, there was better quality in that, in that way, rather than machine picked, um, but they just weren't getting the same subsidies. The interesting thing is, which really frustrates me, um, because cotton was my was my heart in the beginning, is that that was what I was looking at 10 years ago and the, they were talking about the subsidies. They have the C4 countries, if you know, Mali, Chad, um, I think it's Burkina, and I forget their fourth one, and um, Benin, it might be Benin. Um, they're called the C4 countries and they wanted the support to be able to um, basically sell their cotton. And 10 years later, I went to the World Cotton Day. I don't know if you guys were able to go. So it was in Geneva, end of last year. It's called World Cotton Day, the first one I did last year. You guys need to come if they do it again this year. Um, but it's frustrating going because the same stories were being told. They were asking um, the, you know, the WTO, um, they had all of those guys there, the UN, WTO, all of these guys, and they had the same ambassadors from agriculture, trade, for, around, trade ministers of agriculture and so forth, saying that um, they need help. They need the WTO to help them because they want to support their cotton farmers. They, they need to trade this and that to support their families. It was sad. For me, it was sad. It was just, it was... Ten years later, same exact conversation. Nothing ten moved. years ago, it was the same conversation. And I know that, was, that probably was the same ten years before that. I only started in this game 10 years ago. So, yeah. <sighs> it needs to be changed. But we know there needs to be more generies on the, on the, in, the in industry and more demand, as you were saying. Um, and that's why telling the stories, um, I'm working with mills as well to sell just, you know, the plain cotton as well for people to purchase from different countries. I work with cotton traders for Africa as well. Um, again, it's a demand thing, quantity thing, but to kind of push that in different ways is getting more trade around that and the story around that, which I think is really important. So your work is key, even though it's like mm -hmm. pulling teeth, it's, it's, it's key. Yeah. It's definitely key. So um, please press on. And as we're pressing on, please tell me about some of the positive aspects. Either, I mean, I've seen a product behind you. I just, I just see, mm -hmm. I, I see Japan. I see, um, urban wear, I see Amsterdam, I'm seeing all these cool places, that's what I'm seeing with the product and yeah but tell from your own perspective the positives around doing this kind of business um, working with Nigeria, working with the cost industry, working with let's talk about the indigo, let's talk about all of that well, tell me about the positives that you've found so far so far yes. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> the people that we work with are the biggest bright spot for me. Mm. We okay. take them as co-creators and there's a lot of life that you experience when you listen to them, um, when you work with them, when you experience some of their challenges. Mm. So that's a big, I would say a big positive for me is finding people who are really passionate about their craft. Um, if you go to the dye pits in Kano, over there, Orma spent, uh, what was it, two weeks last year? Oh, wow. Go to the dye pits in Kano. Go to the dye pits in Kano. Uh, Orma spent two weeks there last year um, coming up with some new designs for uh, our fabrics and it was quite a beautiful experience because within a short time they were able to do this really interesting exchange um, where they're taking techniques that they use traditionally um, things from hand weaving to resist dye techniques 
and she's coming up with new designs, new types of weaves um, to incorporate into their process. And because of how passionate and how excited they, they are about indigo and indigo as a way of life, it was so easy for them to adopt these new ideas and incorporate it into what is for them already a way of life. Yeah. So I think that's like a... incredibly open. They're just incredibly open. Wow. Sometimes I felt bad because I'm like, oh my God, this is your time that I'm spending and you probably have other things to do instead of like my R and D because they don't like charge you for their time per se. Like you have to pay them, but they don't charge you for their time. Yeah. And they don't, they're just excited to try everything new and like push the boundaries and they have no problems. They're incredibly open. The people will work with, I think that has got to be the most positive. Even like the textile mills, like I say that they won't um, open new production lines for us, but like when, when we went to the mills, they received us like wide open arms, you know, like oh, wow. they were very happy to have conversations with us, to look at our project. They were very happy to, to work with us, you know? Um, it just doesn't make like financial sense for them, you know. That's where that's where they draw the line when it doesn't make financial sense to do something. It's business as well, isn't it? So yeah, we have to think that. Are you documenting some of the stories with the the dye pits, especially? Have you started that, or possibly to do that? <laughs> Sorry, to document any of the stories and the things that they're sharing with you. Oh yeah, yeah. So we, I worked on a project with them which we haven't released yet. So I have all of this content and, that we haven't shared yet. Ooh, okay. Um, when is it going to be shared? <laughs> yeah, that, that was supposed to be June, but at this, at this rate, it was supposed to be end of May, June. Yeah. Really, I'm not sure what's going to happen um, because everything is really uncertain, but then <laughs> we see, yeah. Okay. We, well, we will share them when, when we've already shared lots of content with, uh, from the pits, okay. uh, but then we will share these as well. For sure. Awesome. 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 Well, once I get that, once I get that from you, I'll add it to you. have more positive things to say. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you, you indeed. I can go on forever. You can go um, on. I'll add one more theme, which is this idea of sustainability. What yes. we have discovered on, in going on this journey is that sustainability is for many of the people that we work with a way of life. Yes. They, they, they don't think about being sustainable. They just are sustainable. The processes that they use are sustainable. There's a almost like a unspoken zero waste principle where mm -hmm. everything is used for something else um, everything is used for something new. Uh, and I think that has influenced the way that we do our work as well. So the sustainability principles that we have imbibed as a brand kind of draw on some of those zero waste principles, some of those zero waste ideas where, where we, we value the fabric, we think it's really precious and it takes us we're constantly looking for ways to repurpose it, not only to make new things with it, but to think about the things that didn't work out. How can we revive it? How can we still introduce it in the products that are coming out? So that, that for me is um, one of the real big positives of going on this journey and, and working in Nigeria because you find it in... Uh, yeah, it's not just in the cotton industry, it's everywhere. You find it right? everywhere. Once right? you start working with people and a lot of the artisans, and you start, once you start working with these people, you realize that that's just how they work. They don't waste that much. Everything that is supposedly waste goes into something else. And so it's an exchange. So we just end up kind of imbibing that. And I will say one more positive thing yeah. is just, it's so inspiring how much we have and how much is untapped currently. Wow. It's, with everything that I'm working on or everything, every project, every single like idea or potential, 
there's just so much that can be done. Like even with the Funtua project, we haven't even scratched the surface and we're like, okay, enough of this project. We need to move on. But then there's all of these other things, you know, there's so much that hasn't been done and there's so much potential with like resources and skills and people. And that is just, that for me actually is the biggest positive. <laughs> Wow, yes. Yeah, because every day, like every day, I get so inspired, you know. It's very inspiring. Yeah. yeah. I feel you. I feel you. That's why I'm doing what I do because I speak to everybody with these amazing stories. Mm-hmm. I just go, oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. It's, it's so, so inspiring. But tell me about the products. Um, we haven't actually mentioned the type of products that you're doing. Um, I'm going to flash some pictures through um, the video, but you know, I see some of the products that you're doing. And um, yeah, tell us about the actual products that you're making with the cotton. So we started with um, the flagship product was if this is from Tuati. So after we went on the trip, we found the cotton. We went to the to the north. We were, we got back and we were so excited and we thought, you know what, we just need to make this a thing. Like everyone needs to know what Funtua is because yes. like Funtua is it, it was a market lingo. You know what I mean? Like only like the real market people used it. Okay. So, and then we discovered the lingo obviously because we were trying to find the cotton. And so we thought, you know what, let's put this on the t-shirt. Like let, we need people to talk about this. We need people to talk about the cotton. We need people, we need to strike conversations about the cotton. So let's start with this product, which was that shirt, this shirt. So this is, this is like the second, edition of this t-shirt um and it's like you can see it's like a flag thing so it's yeah. kind of like a flag it's a flying flag that says this is contour nigerian made cotton and we had the first version which was just straight and very clear and um, yeah, i remember that one <laughs> yeah um so those those two t's are like the signature like product and then we we've, we've just launched something called uniform wear and uniform wear is basically um it's a collection of like basics that we've kind of like designed for the Af- not even the african creative for the creative for like anyone who sets out of their house and has a schedule but doesn't know when when their day is gonna start or when their day is gonna end or like yeah. you know a very dynamic kind of worker yeah, yeah so it- Okay. It's, it's essentially a, a collection of live work basics so we call it live work wear mm-hmm. and it's basically clothes this is what, I, the, what the shirt that i'm wearing is part of the uniform wear collection yes um it's a long sleeve shirt and it's basically very very comfortable durable clothes that can take you from day to night and you said there's different weights as well. You've got like a three different weights. Is that correct? Or is it four different? There's, there's four different weights of cotton, actually five, but there's one that we don't really sell. Okay. Um, but it's very light. Um, it's very like see-through. Very, it's almost like... Um, like a linen? Or lighter than a linen? Lighter than a linen. It's literally... Holes in between... Um, it's very light, big holes in between. The weave is just really, really light. Yeah, we don't sell it because we're, the supply is not as, it's not really produced okay. that, on that scale, yeah. It's so very, there's four very existing. Okay. Yeah, it's very niche. Okay. It's basically like the fabric that the MIs wear, like they cover their face with, so it's very breathable. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and um, yeah, and then we have um, lots of collaborations. We're constantly so in the works at the moment. We have three collaborations. If okay. I count the few, four. So we basically like work with different like um, creatives and designers, or just and like people, random people. Can you mention any? Any that we would know? Any that? Yeah, yeah. Sure. The, the what we were supposed to launch one two weeks ago or last week. And that was with, do you know Olushe, the artist? Not by name. I have to see He's if I can. He's an Canadian artist. Okay. Um, Olushe, he does like these faces, African faces. Um, 
but yeah, so one of the, the last one was with him. And then we have one which we've kind of launched on the website, but we haven't done the official launch for because that was also supposed to be at the end of, of yeah. March. Yeah. So it's, it's available on the website to pre-order, but then we haven't launched it officially. And that was with Abba Makama. He's a film director. Oh, wow. Okay. He's a film director. And that's just T-shirts. So yeah, we've got lots of like collaborations in between Bitcomware oh. and um, the teas, but we just don't create um, fashion collections per se because they're arguably not really like we don't see the need for them essentially. Um, it seems it's, you're more about the narrative though than yeah we're more about the narrative product, in that sense the product is part of the narrative it's the greater story um yeah. that's what i get from it um yeah yeah so at the moment but you are selling products you do sell these products or you're about to sell these products and you have a web shop as well so um is it for the international market or the local market would you say that you're focused on so we 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 are focused on both markets. Yeah. Um, the, lo the local market knows us a bit more because we've been here, we've got Instagram, um, we've done quite a bit of like campaigns locally. Um, internationally, without having a website, there's not that much of a conversation you can have. So yeah. um, as much as we've tried to strike um, connections and transactions, we haven't really... Um, I wouldn't say we've succeeded as much. Mm -hmm. um, just launched the website last week or about 10 days ago. Yeah. And so far, so, so far it's been great. We've got, um, it, we can finally find, send out the website to lots of like international connections and conversations that we started. Um, so yeah, I would say that it's, it's targeted at both. Internationally, it's targeted obviously for sales, but also for for PR and exactly. for like communication and locally it's just mainly for sales okay so I mean it looks great well from what I saw it, it looks great and mm -hmm. the products the branding the this just the simplicity like I was saying the simplicity of everything and the um the rawness of it it's just I just love it I just love it I think sometimes just less is more and it tells a lot with just saying little. And I think that's, that's powerful. Um, so tell me some of the lessons that you've learned. It's only been, how long has it been now since you've been doing the business? Is it just a couple, a few years? It's three years now. Okay. So in the three years, what lessons have you learned um, about doing this type of business, this kind of fashion products in, in Nigeria? It's a hard one, I know. <laughs> For me, the biggest takeaway is uh, take your time. Mm. I think the, the, we, we have certain preconceived notions of how you generate value, what value is, mm. um, what sort of systems you have to plug into to generate value. And in the African context that we operate in, um, here in Lagos, in Katsina, in Kano, there are um, informal systems and informal structures that are in place that people have developed over time to create what is their way of life or what is their way of being productive. And to plug into it um, and enrich it or generate value for everyone within the system, but also people outside of the system, you need to take some time to just listen. You need to take some time to just learn and just develop some patience. Uh, so I would say that's the... That's <laughs> oh, not difficult, then. <laughs> patience. <laughs> for me, the biggest takeaway, that's, that's been the biggest lesson. Um, yeah. For me, the biggest lesson would probably be like, I don't think I valued working with people as much before This Is Us. Um, but the biggest lesson for me is just really get everyone on board, you know? Get everyone on board and make it work. 
that there has this good there's going to, as long as everyone is adding some sort of value to the product or to the brand or to what you're doing um then get them on board and figure out how to create value or like or pay them you know mm-hmm. but what value everyone wants and make it work i've come from quite a structured background of of understanding how the fashion system works and i would say it's quite is a western um background because i've studied this thing you know mm-hmm. but then in real life the way that it works most of the time is way more like osi says it's just it's very very informal structures and you literally just need to be fair to people and yes be fair to yourself and they no structures that like that yeah so true so that, that's what i've learned yes um even with collaborating it's just about being open and being transparent and you would find that most people want to collaborate and most people are are just willing to trade for whatever they find is value so i think it's exciting the more the merrier and the better well, the there's product. a phrase collaboration over competition but um, it's it's <laughs> how people perceive it especially in fashion it's a hard one yeah <laughs> you, have to, you have to both in the same mind mindset to collaborate but um i love the i love the approach that you guys are taking i love the messaging the story telling the the, the, the branding the the concept is all there and um take your time <laughs> two of the most difficult things for creatives in business but hey um, yeah. a strong lesson so just to end um just to end is there for those who may want to come on board and um, like i get a lot of you know do business coaching and consulting and many who want to source in africa many who want to start and set up something in africa and i know we're talking about nigeria here so let's focus on nigeria but somebody who wants to come and and work in Nigeria, set up a fashion business, not necessarily cotton, but generally fashion focused business. What tips could you give for them? Um, it's not lessons learned, but actual tips in getting started. Is there process that people that they governments are need to speak to or whatever? What kind of tips for working in Nigeria for fashion business? Can you advise? I um, would say um, really, really do your research properly. And when I say research it's not like a research that you're doing for your computer like to put down some information in your computer literally the entire system is untapped and undiscovered yeah. and you I would say spend a lot of time just like discovering what exists and why it exists the way it exists um how it could exist differently um where you could plug in what value are you adding um you know there's so much there's so much to navigate because there's nothing that's been set out there's no structures there's no it's just like the tourism industry like you walk into lagos and you're on your own man figure it out you know <laughs> it's the same thing with the fashion industry literally so that allows <laughs> that allows for a lot of like innovation and a lot of because there's a lot that you can discover that could be that much better or you could tell a story much better you could you know so that's what i would say is like take your time and do your research that's the first thing take your time do your research two things <laughs> wow yeah what's your name any yeah. other last no, word um it's it's very important to make friends to build some um some allies to build some connections and then make that the and then enrich those friendships right so if you center your business or whatever it is you're doing around relationships that you start to build when you come in then you you enrich some lives and when you enrich lives you create something that is rewarding 
So that, that would be my biggest thing is, yeah, find that community of people. You know, your first step really should be to build a community of friends for your brand. Um, and then you know that you have allies that are vested in your concept or in your idea that have joined you in the co-creation of your idea. Um, such that you know, whatever it is that you're, you're going to face, right? Everything from legal issues to um, intellectual property um, to just, you know, um, competent workers, uh, all sorts of things, import, export. There, there's a million different things. Um, those friends are the people that will help you navigate the different challenges that are um, here in Nigeria. Um, and I, once you can navigate those challenges, you're ultimately creating value, right? That's where the opportunity lies here in Nigeria. Yeah, totally agree. Okay, so many nuggets you guys have given from relational structures, patience, mm -hmm. research, um, and appreciation of the, the people that are working with you, the people you are producing. That seems to be something that you brought up as well. And um, so much takeaway. Just take your time. Just take your time. Um, but thank you, guys. You are awesome. Um, I know you have some things planned. And we can't talk about what's coming up because the situation we're in right now. But um, people can still go to your Instagram. You've got the, the web shop open now. I'll put the links um, down below. And I want to say thank you both again for your time. Thank you very Thank much you for um, sharing and for all the work that you're doing. And so, yeah, thank you guys for watching. It's Jacqueline Shaw. I'm Jacqueline Shaw, your African fashion business coach. Do make sure to subscribe to the channel. Every Thursday is a new video telling the fashion African voices from those who are working on the ground, the stories of fashion made in Africa today. Thank you. Thank you.